Balaam said, Build me seven altars here, and then prepare seven bulls and seven rams. Balak did it. Then Balaam and Balak sacrificed a bull and a ram on each of the altars. Balaam instructed Balak, Stand watch here beside your whole burnt offering while I go off by myself. Maybe God will come and meet with me. Whatever he shows or tells me, I'll report to you. Then he went off by himself. God did meet with Balaam. Balaam said, I've set up seven altars and offered a bull and a ram on each altar. Then God gave Balaam a message, return to Balak and give him this message. He went back and found him stationed beside his whole burnt offering and with him all the nobles of Moab. Then Balaam spoke his message oracle, Balak let me hear from Aram, the king of Moab all the way from the eastern mountains go, curse Jacob for me, go, damn Israel. How can I curse whom God has not cursed? How can I damn whom God has not damned? From rock pinnacles I see them, from hilltops I survey them, look. A people camping off by themselves, thinking themselves outsiders among nations. But who could ever count the dust of Jacob or take a census of cloud of dust Israel? I want to die like these right living people. I want an end just like theirs. Balak said to Balaam, what's this? I brought you here to curse my enemies, and all you've done is bless them. Balaam answered, don't I have to be careful to say what God gives me to say? Balak said to him, go with me to another place from which you can only see the outskirts of their camp, you won't be able to see the whole camp. From there, curse them for my sake. So he took him to Watchman's Meadow at the top of Pisgah. He built seven altars there and offered a bull and a ram on each altar. Balaam said to Balak, take up your station here beside your whole burnt offering while I meet with him over there. God met with Balaam and gave him a message. He said, return to Balak and give him the message. Balaam returned and found him stationed beside his whole burnt offering and the nobles of Moab with him. Balak said to him, what did God say? Then Balaam spoke his message oracle, on your feet, Balak. Listen, listen carefully son of Zippor, God is not man, one given to lies, and not a son of man changing his mind. Does he speak and not do what he says? Does he promise and not come through? I was brought here to bless, and now he's blessed, how can I change that? He has no bone to pick with Jacob, he sees nothing wrong with Israel. God is with them, and they're with him, shouting praises to their king. God brought them out of Egypt, rampaging like a wild ox. No magic spells can bind Jacob, no incantations can hold back Israel. People will look at Jacob and Israel and say, what a great thing has God done. Look, a people rising to its feet, stretching like a lion, a king of the beasts, aroused, unsleeping, unresting until its hunt is over and it's eaten and drunk its fill. Balak said to Balaam, well, if you can't curse them, at least don't bless them. Balaam replied to Balak, didn't I tell you earlier, all God speaks, and only what he speaks, I speak. Balak said to Balaam, please, let me take you to another place, maybe we can find the right place in God's eyes where you'll be able to curse them for me. So Balak took Balaam to the top of Pir, with a vista over the Shimon, wasteland. Balaam said to Balak, build seven altars for me here and prepare seven bulls and seven rams for sacrifice. Balak did it and presented an offering of a bull and a ram on each of the altars. By now Balaam realized that God wanted to bless Israel. So he didn't work in any sorcery as he had done earlier. He turned and looked out over the wilderness. As Balaam looked, he saw Israel camp tribe by tribe. The Spirit of God came on him, and he spoke his oracle message, decree of Balaam son of Beer, yes, decree of a man with twenty twentieths vision, decree of a man who hears God speak, who sees what the strong God shows him, who falls on his face in worship, who sees what's really going on. What beautiful tents, Jacob, oh, your homes, Israel. Like valleys stretching out in the distance, like gardens planted by rivers, like sweet herbs planted by the gardener God, like red cedars by pools and springs, their buckets will brim with water, their seed will spread life everywhere. Their king will tower over Agag and his ilk, their kingdom surpassingly majestic. God brought them out of Egypt, rampaging like a wild ox, gulping enemies like morsels of meat, crushing their bones, snapping their arrows. Israel crouches like a lion and naps, king of the beasts, who dares disturb him. Whoever blesses you is blessed, whoever curses you is cursed. Balak lost his temper with Balaam. He shook his fist. He said to Balaam, I got you in here to curse my enemies and what have you done? 
Bless them. Bless them three times. Get out of here. Go home. I told you I would pay you well, but you're getting nothing. You can blame God. Balaam said to Balak, Didn't I tell you up front when you sent your emissaries, even if Balak gave me his palace stuffed with silver and gold, I couldn't do anything on my own, whether good or bad, that went against God's command? I'm leaving for home and my people, but I warn you of what this people will do to your people in the days to come. Then he spoke his oracle message, decree of Balaam son of Beer, decree of the man with twenty twentieths vision, decree of the man who hears godly speech. Who knows what's going on with the high God, who sees what the strong God reveals, who bows in worship and sees what's real. I see him, but not right now, I perceive him, but not right here, a star rises from Jacob a scepter from Israel, crushing the heads of Moab, the skulls of all the noisy windbags, I see Edom sold off at auction, enemy seer marked down at the flea market, while Israel walks off with the trophies. A ruler is coming from Jacob who'll destroy what's left in the city. Then Balaam spotted Amalek and delivered an oracle message. He said, Amalek, you're in first place among nations right now, but you're going to come in last, ruined. He saw the Canites and delivered his oracle message to them, your home is in a nice secure place, like a nest high on the face of a cliff. Still, you Canites will look stupid when Asher takes you prisoner. Balaam spoke his final oracle message, Doom. Who stands a chance when God starts in? Sea peoples, raiders from across the sea, will harass Asher and Eber, but they'll also come to nothing, just like all the rest. Balaam got up and went home. Balak also went on his way. The orgy at Shittim. While Israel was camped at Shittim, Acacia Grove, the men began to have sex with the Moabite women. It started when the women invited the men to their sex and religion worship. They ate together and then worshipped their gods. Israel ended up joining in the worship of the Baal of Peer. God was furious, his anger blazing out against Israel. God said to Moses, take all the leaders of Israel and kill them by hanging. Leaving them publicly exposed in order to turn God's anger away from Israel. Moses issued orders to the judges of Israel, each of you must execute the men under your jurisdiction who joined in the worship of Baal Peer. Just then. While everyone was weeping in penitence at the entrance of the tent of meeting, an Israelite man, flaunting his behavior in front of Moses and the whole assembly, paraded a Midianite woman into his family tent. Phineha son of Eliezer, the son of Aaron the priest, saw what he was doing, grabbed his spear, and followed them into the tent. With one thrust he drove the spear through the two of them, the man of Israel and the woman, right through their midsections. That stopped the plague from continuing among the people of Israel. But twenty-four thousand had already died. God spoke to Moses, Phineha son of Eliezer, son of Aaron the priest, has stopped my anger against the people of Israel. Because he was as zealous for my honor as I myself am, I didn't kill all the people of Israel in my zeal. So tell him that I am making a covenant of peace with him. He and his descendants are joined in a covenant of eternal priesthood, because he was zealous for his God and made atonement for the people of Israel. The name of the man of Israel who was killed with the Midianite woman was Zimri son of Salu, the head of the Simeonite family. And the name of the Midianite woman who was killed was Kajbi daughter of Zur, a tribal chief of a Midianite family. God spoke to Moses, from here on make the Midianites your enemies. Fight them tooth and nail. They turned out to be your enemies when they seduced you in the business of Peer and that woman Kajbi, daughter of a Midianite leader, the woman who was killed at the time of the plague in the matter of Peer. 